What the visionaries had in common was a particular love of craft and a desire to play. Hello, welcome to this mini course demonstrating how we can get the most and squeeze every drop from Squarespace by combining it with the equally accessible and user-friendly Canva. So for those of you who don't know what Canva is, it's a desktop publishing piece of software that allows you to create custom graphics all through your web browser, or you can download mobile, tablet, or desktop apps to do the same, much like how Squarespace enables you to create the same effect using browsers for creating websites. So it's a natural joining of the two to get some more bespoke and stylistic effects. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on here. The course is free, but it will also fit as part in seamlessly as a module in both Canva and in Squarespace as well. We hope you enjoy it. And we're gonna really try and show how you can stretch Squarespace and get the most from it. Throughout this course, we're gonna show you how we can break out of the box model that we have with modern website designs and including the 12 column grid and how we can move away from that boxy approach to something that's more creative and often more fluid. So the first question you might have in your head is why do we need to connect or utilize both Canva and Squarespace to get the effects we want? And when would we normally do that? Well, the answer is you don't need to. We could create an effective professional website in Squarespace alone, and we could use stock images or stock graphics to get what we need to across. But sometimes you may want to keep your brand consistency coming from of what could be a very playful, creative brand carrying through the website, which may not mean things like straight edges around banner images. And that's where we can use Canva to get those type of effects. We'll show you a couple of examples in a minute. The other thing to think of is there's always a trade-off. If we're using custom graphics, then that might increase the load time of the page because transparency and using PNG files instead of JPEGs can sometimes mean larger files for the same effect. So we have to pick our right time to use it and we have to get the balance right as well. Pixelation and image quality can also be an issue, especially if we're trying to keep those file sizes small to enable us to get that load time of the page down. So if we're taking 15 seconds to load up our home page, the likelihood is Google's not gonna react very well to that. So you're not gonna appear in search engine rankings as competitively as you would otherwise. And also then you have an issue with, are your users, your end users gonna to wanna to wait as they visit the site? Or are they gonna bounce off your website and onto another one? So those need to be taken into consideration as well. There are also some technical constraints when we're using things like custom background graphics to achieve certain effects. And when we reduce it down to tablet, especially tablet portrait, and then even more so with mobile devices, we need to make sure that we're creating graphics that, that are rigorous enough to accept that. Some examples that we'll be running through this course are hero banners. So these are the large billboard style banners that you get on top of many web pages and showing how we can use new stylistic effects within that um, background effect. So where we could have a background abstract texture or a photo, and then we have a floating image that sits on top of that. And we'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Uh, using background and cutout image combinations, as I just mentioned, then we move into duotone effects using two tones of the same color instead of having a full color photo. So it's not quite monochromatic in terms of just grayscale, black and white, we can use two tones of the same color and there's a very handy tool within Canva that allows us to do that. And we'll then move on to text and image combinations as well, making sure wherever possible, we're using live editable text on a website as opposed to making the text as part of the graphic. You can do that, but again, there's always a trade-off when we're doing that. So we're gonna be looking at text and graphics, and then maybe bringing in and how we can combine them with our library of plugins we have here at Pixel Haze store. So 
when we're combining all of these elements together, it's amazing some of the effects we can get. And also templates. We build a number of templates that utilize custom graphics that we create in Canva. So in those cases, we can provide the templates for Canva graphics that go alongside the Squarespace templates. But another step on again is to get our customers into a position where they're comfortable creating their own custom graphics if that's the direction they want to go. Here's a quick example demonstrating what we're going to be looking at in more detail. So here we have a classic hero banner. And with this hero unit, we've got a background texture, this chalkboard effect. We've then got our title line underneath it. And then finally, then we've got this globe and the earth is going to float on the background. First question is, why does it need to float over top of it? Well, we don't have a fixed constraint over the size of this banner. So what most websites, Squarespace included, will use that and it will reduce or expand the background. We set a focal point on that background to say, actually, if we're in mobile mode, it's focusing on this section here as it goes from a landscape image to a portrait one. But by having this floating, both this will move closer and further away from the text. But when we hit that mobile breakpoint where it breaks down into single columns where we have the text, then image, this image will then move below the text. So that's a great way to show how we can use multiple images in banners and to get a very bespoke feel, but also how we can do it effectively. You could again do a lot of this in Squarespace, but you'd still need that PNG file with a transparent background because you couldn't simply just slice a square out of that because we'd see differences between this texture on the background image here and the texture on the background of the overlapping image. We'll be having a look at that in more detail and showing you some live examples. You could obviously get away with it with just a simple solid background color and then an image which has the background color to match. But even then, we're running into more issues where what if you change the background color and want to go down a different route? So that's just one example of the type of things we'll be looking at in this course. And the one thing I wanted to wrap up with is we are looking at building out from the brand. So every step of the way, we're making sure that the graphics, the custom graphics we make for our Squarespace website tie in neatly with our brand. They can stretch your brand and take it into new directions and types of campaigns but it always needs to stay true. So one thing I'll be saying multiple times through this course is we need to build out from the brand. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.